Napoleon was a cunning, ambitious, and superb military strategist who led his armies to victory against multiple coalitions of European nations, allowing him to extend his empire successfully. Napoleon was even revered as a hero of the French Revolution. However, after his death, people mistakenly started to compare him to Hitler or Stalin, viewing him as the predecessor of the great dictators of the 20th century. But who really was Napoleon? Was he a visionary or a tyrant, or maybe both? Let's try to find out through this video. Napoleon was the fourth child of Carlo and Letizia Buonaparte born. He was born in Corsica shortly after the Genoese surrendered it to France. Corsicans led by Pasquale Paoli opposed French control of their land. Napoleon's father, Carlo, joined Paoli's camp but sided with the French when Paoli fled. After winning the governor's protection, he was elected auditor for Ajaccio's court district in 1771. Joseph, Napoleon's brother, and Napoleon were admitted to College Doton in 1778. A Corsican by birth, Napoleon continued to see himself as a foreigner even though he was schooled in France from age 9 onwards. Napoleon enrolled in Brienne and then in Paris Military Academy. His father died of cancer in 1785, leaving the family in dire straits. Napoleon became the family's head before age 16, despite not being the oldest son. He passed from the military academy in September. Later, he was promoted to second lieutenant in a French army artillery unit. Three years after the French Revolution started in 1789, the monarchy was toppled, and a republic was declared. Napoleon spent the early years of the revolution mostly at home in Corsica while on vacation from the troops. There, he joined the Jacobins, a political movement that supported democracy. The Bonaparte family left their native island in 1793 and moved to France after a fight with the nationalist Corsican governor Pasquale Pauli. Napoleon then resumed his military service. He became identified in France with Jacobin Augustin Robespierre, who was a major driving force behind the Reign of Terror, a period of repression against the revolution's foes. Napoleon was given the military title of Brigadier General at this time. However, due to his connections to the Robespierre brothers, he was briefly placed under house arrest. Afterward, when the Robespierre brothers lost their authority and were executed together in July 1794, Napoleon was appointed as a major general. He assisted in quelling a royalist uprising against the revolutionary government in Paris in 1795. Napoleon married Josephine de Beauharnais on March 9, 1796, the widow of General Alexander de Beauharnais, who had two kids of her own. Two years late, Napoleon was sent to the Middle East in 1798. This was done as part of a plan to cut off British trading with the area. But his campaign was a failure. Austria, Britain, Turkey, and Russia allied against France, and as a result, the French were defeated in the Italian peninsula in 1799 and forced to give up most of their holdings there. France also had ongoing civil upheaval at the time. The Jacobins carried out a coup and seized power in June 1799. In October of that same year, Napoleon returned and plotted with a member of the new administration to stage a second coup, which put him and two other people in power. Napoleon's coup was successful, and as a result, a new constitution was adopted in 1800, and a post known as the First Consul, basically a dictatorship, was created. Generals, governors, public officers, judges, and legislators might all be appointed by the person at this post. The first person to hold this office was Napoleon. He oversaw numerous reforms in the fields of the economy, society, military, culture, law, education, and religion, including the restoration of Roman Catholicism as the official religion. The Napoleonic Code, a body of legislation that forbade granting advantages based on birth, mandated that government employment be given to the competent one rather than who utilized favors. Guaranteed freedom of religion was also given attention under his supervision. He fought outside the French borders and brought about a brief era of peace in Europe. Napoleon's reforms were so well received that he was elected the first consul for the remainder of his life in 1802. However, the peace established by Napoleon was temporary. In 1803, a war broke out between France and Britain, and shortly after, Russia and Austria joined the conflict. Due to a military defeat, Napoleon's original plan to conquer England was shelved. However, 
he was able to put his supporters in positions of authority in Naples, Sweden, Holland, Italy, Westphalia, and Spain because of his triumphs in the East, which included defeating combined Russian and Austrian forces at Austerlitz. In 1804, he was given the title of Emperor of France. Meanwhile, Napoleon split with Josephine in 1810 because she could not conceive a son. In the same year, he wed Marie Louise, the Austrian emperor's daughter. Napoleon II, their son, was born in 1811. A winter invasion of Russia in 1812 started with almost 600,000 troops, leaving fewer than 10,000 men in shape to fight. France's budget was also destroyed because of the war. This was the turning point in Napoleon's military invincibility. Napoleon's defeat emboldened both his domestic and foreign foes. While Napoleon was at war, a coup attempt was made, but it was in vain. However, the British troops were advancing across French territory at the same time. So, Napoleon renounced on March 30, 1814, having little left to defend himself and facing intense pressure from internal and external sources. As a result, he was banished to the island of Elba from France. Napoleon left Elba and traveled to French land with more than 1,000 supporters on February 26, 1815, less than a year after going into exile. On March 20, he arrived back in Paris to a warm reception from the populace. When Louis XVIII, the new monarch, retreated, Napoleon started what would become recognized as his Hundred Days Campaign. However, a coalition of allies, the Austrians, British, Prussians, and Russians, who viewed the French emperor as an enemy started making war plans as soon as Napoleon returned to France. Napoleon organized a new army and made plans to assault them ahead of time, taking out the armies one by one before they could fight him collectively. Napoleon's army occupied Belgium in June 1815 and overcame the Prussians at the Battle of Ligny on June 16. However, on June 18, two days later, the British defeated the French at the Battle of Waterloo with the help of the Prussians. Thus, Napoleon was once more compelled to surrender on June 22, 1815, and was banished to the inaccessible, British-controlled island of St. Helena in the South Atlantic Ocean in October 1815. At age 51, he passed away. It was on May 5, 1821, that he died, presumably from stomach cancer. And although he requested to be buried on the banks of the Seine, among the French people he loved so dearly, his wish remained unfulfilled. Regardless of this, Napoleon greatly influenced the modern world and will always be remembered as one of the greatest military leaders in history. This brings us to the end of this video. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and sharing, so we can keep bringing more content like this. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time.